Hello guys welcome to our YouTube channel which entertains you with a lot of amazing content. Here in our today video we are going to talk about top 10 best luxury restaurants in Sydney. Let's get started. Looking for the best fine dining in Sydney restaurants? Whether you're looking for somewhere to eat in Sydney to celebrate a special occasion or wondering where to eat for a corporate dinner look no further. Here are some of the 10 best in fine dining in Sydney and whether they are really worth the hype. Number 10. Key. Key might have turned 21 this year, but Peter Gilmore's flagship fine diner has never looked or felt fresher. The dining room has had a facelift, spotted gum tables have been brought in along with custom, made leather chairs and a royal blue carpet that stretches endlessly out to sea. The showpiece remains the Sydney Opera House, with its glowing white sails which can be admired from all angles. When it comes to the 10, course tasting menu Gilmore is at the top of his game. Save room for the snow egg successor white coral a snap, frozen Ganek sculpture served on a seabed of fragrant Figeo ice cream. The simple yet sophisticated design of key makes it feel like you're in a bubble within the harbour. You'd expect a certain level of pretension with a three chef hat eatery but I felt welcome from the moment I strolled in. Number 9. St. Peter. Six years on St. Peter has more disciples than ever. Josh Nyland's world. Leading seafood restaurant continues to deliver a sustainably driven fin. 2. Scale feast that every foodie needs to experience at least once. Pull up a seat at the 12M Carrara marble counter where oysters are shucked and offcut such as ice scales bladder and row, are miraculously transformed into appetizing dishes. Lemon has long been the traditional accompaniment to seafood and it's represented here in a gravity, defying citrus tart. The just, set texture and sweet, Tart taste mark the perfect end to an extraordinary evening. Number 8. Encore by Claire Smith. Within the gleaming tower that is Crown Sydney is the plush and hushed surrounds of a serious fine diner and an international one at that. The new outpost of Michelin, starred London chef Claire Smith Encore has harbour views everywhere and a pointy, end menu, to match. Sources are poured tableside wines are matched, from a heavily European list with a few well, known Aussie heavy. Hitters, and plates are swept away. Quite simply Encore is serious traditional immaculate fine, dining in a special occasion room with breathtaking views. Number 7. Ursula's Paddington. The first independent restaurant of acclaimed chef Phil would formerly of P.T. Leo Estate and Rockpool Ursula sits within a pretty corner terrace in the leafy back streets of Paddington. The newly renovated space could just as easily be an art gallery, and the menu proves Wood's talent at turning simple dishes into show-stopping masterworks. The restaurant is billed as a neighborhood diner, but we're not so sure about that. If locals thought they could keep Ursula's all to themselves they'd better think again. Number 6. Fire Door Surrey Hills. Cooking over flames is hot on the international fine, dining circuit. And in Australia no one does it better than Lennox Hasty. Even before an appearance on Netflix's Chef's Table made scoring a table here a competitive sport fire door had become renowned for fire. Fueled cooking of unexpected delicacy. In the open kitchen that forms the smoldering heart of the venue Hasty calmly supervises the wood. Fired grills. From flame to plate there's nowhere to hide in Hasty's kitchen. It's dinner theater acted out by a team firing on all cylinders. Number 5. Aria. As far as dining companions go it's hard to top the Sydney Opera House. It floats in your periphery wherever you're seated at Matt Moran's flagship eatery. From the staff who materialize to open doors to the subtly attentive waitstaff aria is an operatic display of fine, dining finesse. The dining world outside might have embraced share plates and artful insouciance but aria sails ahead doing what it does best. As you polish off a textbook passion fruit souffle you'll be glad it has. The food is good and flavor nicely balanced try and get a window table if you can wrangle it on the reservation. The service is attentive but not as attentive as other places, it may have been due to the fact that we were at an early sitting. Number 4. Benelong Benelong Point. Only Benelong could make turnips sexy. In a dish of sashimi scallops it lends a delicate crunch to an otherwise silky smooth oyster cream dressing. Later we find it playing a supporting role in a magical dish of lightly seared coral trout flown in from the Great Barrier Reef served with, shavings of southern squid on a koji emulsion bed. Granted turnips aren't the only star of the show. There's the knockout location inside the Sydney Opera House, the impeccable level of service on the dining room floor, 
an attention to detail from the kitchen led by chefs Peter Gilmore and Rob Cockerell. Benelong is without a doubt one of most well-known fine dining in Sydney restaurants as it sits in the front sale of the Sydney Opera House. But was Benelong actually worth it? The service was insanely amazing they knew it was my birthday even gave me a cake with a candle on it at the end and the food was incredible, it's without a doubt my favourite restaurant in Sydney. Be expected to pay up for it though the night set us back like $450 between the two of us. Number 3. Berara Waters Inn. Berara Waters Inn is a restaurant owned and run by head chef Brian Garrity located at Berara Waters along Berara Creek, a tributary of the Hawkesbury River, near Ku, Ring, Gari Chase National Park 50 minutes from downtown Sydney, Australia. It is unique due to its being accessed only by private ferry, or airplane as well as being one of Pritzker Prize-winning Australian architect Glenn Merkert's only venues regularly open to the public. Berora Waters Inn is funnily enough located in Berora. For those of you who are not familiar, like I wasn't. It's about one hour drive away from the CBD or a nippy $400 seaplane flight. Getting picked up at the wharf to ride along the river to the restaurant is quite fun and the chap who drives it is pretty fun. Nosh was well balanced with good portion sizes however we didn't get the petty fours that all other tables had because the boat was waiting so I think the staff wanted us to hurry. Number 2. Shell House Dining Room and Terrace Sydney. Multi-level dining destination Shell House has secured some seriously impressive talent for its ninth floor dining room and terrace. With former ARIA head chef Joel Bickford as culinary director and Sixpenis Aaron Ward as head chef the fine diners Mediterranean. Style menu reveals impressive French technique as well as fun and creative flavor combinations delivered with flair and flourish. There's nothing stiff or starchy about the Anna Hewitt, designed dining room which blends tones and styles to create a sophisticated timeless space. The glass, walled dining room is wrapped by an L-shaped garden terrace where diners can head out for a digestive on the deck. Number 1. Luemi Dining. A perfectly plump gun can topped with sea urchin and caviar might be the last snack you'd expect to be served at an Italian restaurant. But it's the exact reason why Luemi stands out from the crowd. By fusing Japanese techniques with Italian hospitality chef Federico Zanilato has created a dining experience that's unlike anything else in Sydney. Set in an ultra-contemporary yet cozy glass box, on Permanent Bay each course of the fresh new degustation menu is delivered by composed waitstaff who never miss a beat. Swaying mast supiots and luemi, it's all about luxe in this pocket of permanent. There are two menus at this moody fine diner but only one choice to make, whether you opt for the original tasting menu, with no fewer than 13 individual dishes, or the omakasa tasting menu on steroids be dazzled with truffle and caviar. Despite the impressive quantity it's somehow impossible not to clear each plate. Thanks for watching.